You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Keith. Johnson. Oh, that's the from the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, and streaming live on Ustream, this is AfterBuzz TV for How to Make It in America. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest How to Make It in America news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, picking up where the show leaves off, and the buzz continues, it's After Buzz TV for How to Make It in America. That is right. You can hear it from the theme song. Oh, boy. I need a dollar. It's a question that we all ask ourselves from time to time. This is the How to Make It in America After Buzz After Show, and uh, we will dissect season number two, episode number five, titled Monfongo. Okay, you guys ready to get Mon-fongo. into it? Yeah. Uh, sure welcome we'll to the conversation. Uh, yeah, I was. What, every what was other that? opening of the the shows, the titles, they all make sense. I'm not really following. Because, because Debbie offered him when Renee came into the house, uh, Mofongo. Oh, oh, so you just... That was, that? The, that, was the that was the food. That was the food that she had offered him. So we were watching all the food sex food? on the show, but you <laughs> yeah, caught that I, little I, I one. Was into, wow. I was into Nancy and Ben at the end. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you're <laughs> See, that, I thought it was Mofongo. Yeah, yeah. Like, Mofongo was what like they were Mojo doing in the back or something. You know, like yeah, Mojo. Yeah, get your Mofongo on. Right, that, that's right. what we're going to have to call it from now on. If you get sex in the back of the cab, it's Mofongo. That's what she's like. How to make it in America. Is that Puerto Rican food? Is that Puerto Rican food? The type of dish? We will search that and we will find that out for you by next episode. Episode. You should know they're Dominicans. They're Dominicans on the show, aren't they? Um, yeah, they're he, Dominican. That, that character might be. Dominican. Anyways, okay, you ready to just dive mm-hmm. into this okay, show sorry. and dissect the whole thing? Well, My name is Ronnie Jr. <laughs> and uh, yeah. we have got a conversation here today. Of course, as always, joining me are uh, Spicy co host Spicy. Spicy Mari. Maricela, uh, who is just always on the grind. She is making it in America. Our social media guru nerd, uh, yeah, Jesse yeah, buddy, F. Daniels, up? in a very already. Interesting location. He's in our little social media couch. Yeah. So we're switching things up a little bit. Um, And as always, we are shouting out our Ustream and our iTunes people checking us out. But we bring guests all the time, people that are moving and shaking. And I think you got somebody. We decided to have some of the most beautiful people in America. Yeah. Let alone, you know, I do world, look that good. Included. Just kidding. Let me not leave out the rest of the world. But uh, we have today with us Azure D. Johnson. Mm-hmm. Little or her. Little me. And she is actress extraordinaire. Yeah. She's also a model. I call her Slash Girl because yeah, she's, she's, she's got she a lot does, of... She does it all. Slash. You may yeah. have seen her Flash. in a BET. Somebody's Help Me Too. Um, and that was with Marcus Houston and Omarion. Yeah. And that was a scary movie that's now airing because it's <laughs> right. Halloween time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then she's also done, uh, she's not our sister, with Jackie Harry, Kalia Smith, uh, Clifton Powell, and Drew Sador and Christian Keyes. She's making it. But if you okay. turn on the channel, you see any commercial. Yeah. Like McDonald's, as Minnie Cooper, Payless. Doing anything. it, doing <laughs> it. Yeah. Definitely. Shame something. on you being so skinny still in McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> I love McDonald's pineapple mango smoothies. Yeah. <laughs> She's ready to get hired for the next commercial. We also have an actor and athlete. We the do. whole thing. Yeah. I get to sit next to this dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he's definitely going to be doing the show uh, with Tyler Perry. This is uh, you go you go by the name J O, but it's Jason Olive, correct? That's right. But yeah. but Joe's like your nickname. No, you, not Joe. J O. People do call me J O. J O. Okay. Yeah, like What's name. interesting about you and why we brought you on the show? You've actually done an HBO series yourself, so you could relate to like what these guys are doing as far as the acting world, right? You've done one of the HBO series. Well, that's why you brought me on, but I thought this was a date. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, oh, I can't because Mario totally picked me up at the restaurant. <laughs> yeah, pick me up that's been restaurant. happening to Mari a lot. This is the worst date him. of my life. I, did, yeah. I, I said, you know what? Our first date is going to be on After Buzz. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Mar- Mari's this been experiencing. Like, but little did I know when I stopped him that he was like a supermodel. I yeah. Mean, like CK, yeah. Armani, no, no, no. This everything. Is, this is like the firm meets cheaters. You get the hot, <laughs> hot, hot, 
Latina girl picks you up and then all of a sudden you're yeah. on TV. Uh, <laughs> or later, they don't, not in the van, J-O, you're just on TV. Uh, try to make it happen and we, enjoy I, it. I could have made it a yeah. I told my wife I, I was going to interview. I'm but... in a house in the valley. <laughs> and then you guys have to watch this episode. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thanks. It's Halloween weekend. <laughs> Maybe a date is, is in the rise. Let's talk about the show. We open up uh, with the club scene. It's always oh, fun. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you watched Entourage, because, uh, you know, the creators of this show also were on Entourage, um, you, you had a lot of those, like, club scenes. What did we think about the opening scene? Uh, did it kind of give us that good impact for the beginning of the show? What were we thinking? It's raw to me. I mean, I feel like this show, what I love about it, and I kind of just got into it, it's so raw and mm-hmm. real. And, I mean, it doesn't look cliched in any way. I mean, you see boobs. You see yeah, right people off the bat. dancing. I just love <laughs> You're it. You're like, what so club is that? I want to go to that one. I want to go there. <laughs> right. And I love it. And I think the opening scene just gets you started. You know, you're just ready. And the interesting thing about that is they go right into business. They see Nancy at this particular club, and they talk about what happened with the lookbook, what happened with the guy that was supposed to connect the dots or whatever. Um, and that does happen sometimes, you know, when you mix business and going out. You guys come have on, any experience? Let, let, let's, let's be real. There's a lot of creative license taken. I've been in a lot of clubs in New York and a lot of strip clubs in New York. <laughs> I have never been in a club, strip club yeah. in New York where a dude can can climb across across the stage, the stage right. yeah. across. and live to tell about it. Oh, okay. right, that right. don't happen in New York. You, you can't make it to the stage, yeah. but you're not going to make it across the stage. Definitely a scene from HBO. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Um, so then all of a sudden we move forward and we see the two St. Louis girls. Uh, Kristen who, who, and yeah. Kristen. Kristen and Kristen. 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 Now we're talking right. true story. And that does seem like a true story because you know you got those St. Louis girls who are like, oh, we're out here in New York and exactly. we're going to let all our yeah. morals... Morals were out the window <laughs> real right. quick, right? That's a, that's a problem with Good Facebook, times and bad It does not stay in Vegas. Mm-hmm. It does not stay in New York. That's a problem with Facebook. That's my mm-hmm. only problem with Facebook. Um, now, what was interesting about them, they actually had a business of their own in mm-hmm. St. Louis. So Ben and Cam, they basically see this as an opportunity. Right. Um, actually, and then St. Louis probably was chosen because Ben, the actual actor, Brian uh, Greenberg, he's from St. Louis. So I, I know they do a lot of tie-ins there. Anyways, you got these St. Louis girls. You've got Ben and Cam pushing up on them. And uh, it basically becomes a thing without the uh, duration of the show. Like, these St. Louis girls, are we going to flirt with them? I or knew we... from the but moment yeah. that I saw them that they were going to be going after these two girls. But that's what it's about. In order to get ahead, you got to place yourself in the right position so that you can get ahead. And I think that's what they did. They took the opportunity, and it was a great opportunity for them, it turns out, you know, to be it, a it great did. Was it, was it strictly business, or it was a little bit of flirting Both. had to be done, you know? They went business behind Nancy's back after she said that she would not connect them and give them work. And they decided that they were going to take matters into their own hands and pursue these girls for business. So, of course, them together plotted and schemed and found out where the ladies were so that that way they could, you know, pursue them and introduce Crisp to them. But I also thought, did Nancy tell the whole truth? It almost seemed like Nancy was saying, oh, yeah, I got this guy. He wants to see your stuff. And I kind of asked the question to myself, like, are we ever going to see him? Is this just one of these things where mm-hmm. she is? She wants Ben. We know this. Right. That's clear. So <laughs> it's real easy if you got somebody that's hungry for their career to say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come come, come to this meeting. I'm a, I'm a, and that seems like what it may be. I don't know. Did you guys agree? They like with- to dangle things. You know, people in power, this happens a lot, and I've went through this myself. They like to dangle, you know, little things in front of you, especially if there's an ulterior mo- motive. So I think that's what she was doing. She was exercising her power. You know, that. one thing I like about the show that in, in the last episode, Episode is that they're actually, um, you know, Amanda Mackey casts this show. Okay. And she's a fantastic casting director. Um, people have seen some stuff she did, like, um, the, I think, Green Zone and Kingdom and stuff like that. But uh, they had some real, you would never have known it, but when, they, when in the last episode, not, not tonight, but last week, when mm-hmm. they were in her house, there were some fashionistas in there, outside of Ms. Roddy, everybody knows who he mm-hmm. is, but in that house, there was people that you would never know that these are the people that run fashion, yeah. like stylists wow. in particular. Oh, just in the background. Because of their look? They or? Came out. No, no, no. They actually run like oh, okay. magazines like GQ wow. and all these mo- all these magazines. And the depth of knowledge to know that these stylists are really the people running these magazines and mm-hmm. then to put them in the show, it's pretty that, awesome. makes, that makes it fantastic for mm-hmm. people who know what they're watching. And I, and I got to say that I think that's, that's Wahlberg's touch. Because everything yeah, he does he is, is detailed. It's very like right. That. I mean, they talk when when I was watching on the HBO. They have the YouTube channel. And they have a inside the series. They go really, really strong within this show to make it as authentic as you can. From the pop up shop to even the interviews that they do. Jesse in the uh, Twitter uh, little roundup that we have later on is going to talk about how 
these characters, not the actors, are getting interviewed by Karma Loop. You know, Karma Loop takes care of everyone and, and interviews everybody. The characters are actually getting interviewed by them. So they try to make the show as authentic as possible. It's the music, it's the it. clubs. Like and they're trying to create that buzz, right. if you know right. what I mean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Evidently, and the, the fashion, too. Yeah, which is good. You gotta do that. I love it. Fashion background, having been a model, correct? The guy was my roommate in college. Wow. I mean, in, in, uh, I'm sorry, when I got Who's out of this? college and went to New York, I can't remember Stefan's last name, but he was there. He stole a lot of shit from me when he moved out. <laughs> <laughs> you remember uh, that? But, you Busting know, he out. created Out Magazine. I mean, he was a huge star, you know, works yeah. for Vogue and all. And, and, and these are the people in the background of that party. Yeah. Just mm. like, how did they even So you would just see, you would just kind of see them in the background and kind of Yeah, connected. and I was like, wow, that's a dude that stole yeah. my shit. I mean, it's uh, every, but, yeah. so so every episode we definitely see that. Every episode we see the connecting of the dots, which is great. Uh, let's move forward to Renee because the storyline here gets a little interesting. Now, Renee, uh, you know, two episodes before was talking about Rasta Monster was his only thing that he actually cared about for the most part or he, he had passion uh, Rasta Monster is now in the suburbs it's kind of a big deal however he can't get over Debbie like his mind is <laughs> shook he loves her. Um, he's whipped <laughs> he seems to be more worried now about Debbie and the Rasta Monster thing his little crew they're still like oh boss we're now in the suburbs aren't you guys aren't you excited but he doesn't really his head's elsewhere we'll see that in the strip club but, later on but that's real life I feel like they brought real life to the show by doing that because when I you are trying to pursue your dreams in your career and you are distracted with the relationship that you know something's going wrong it, it, it drives you nuts you can't think about anything else mm -hmm. but also with Renee it made him more likable like I think I see him as a human being yeah now. like I, he's not just this one note angry you know mobster guy like he really is a human like with emotion and I, I really connected to that so I think he, it made him a yeah. likable character. you know we talk about comparisons to Entourage and I actually didn't didn't know this at all but a friend of mine uh, JC Rubio explain that a lot of the characters are actually similar to each other in some way uh, ways with Entourage. Let's go to Entourage for a second. Um, Ari kind of being like a character like uh, Renee. Do, we, do right. you guys see that at all? <laughs> I mean, because we're seeing so much with this you boss You like the Dominican no. part? Or? No, no. Well, what was Ari <laughs> right, Dominican? Right, but right. Really? No, I'm totally Jewish. <laughs> what? Maybe um, more of what he serves as. Like as the, the boss the dog. Power yeah. The power yeah. force. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the strength. And, the you know, and when we talk about the end of Entourage and how Ari did kind of like, he was always in charge and then he became very soft and questioning mm -hmm. his, what, what am I going to do with my life? Yeah. That is so good to see anybody in power Lose a little bit of not the power, but just give us a little vulnerability. Yeah. Well, I, I think wife, you see, yeah, I think you like see them from wife? from going the from entrepreneur to mm -hmm. man, or or for gangster to man, mm -hmm. or, you know, player to man, whatever mm -hmm. you want to talk point. about it, you know, and and that journey, that journey through manhood is much more profound than right. you know any journey that you're going to take to make a dollar. I mean, you know, the dollar gets in, you know is is something that happens along the way, but that journey to becoming a real man and which means taking responsibility for yeah. the people and that's what you saw in Ari and that's what you see in Renee is they've come to a point in their life where they realize like wow it's really about taking responsibility for other and people. And it happens with, mm -hmm. with age and you know and that, that power you know it happens with that too you start analyzing I guess it's not really that important right. all these other things somebody who definitely has her mind scattered and doesn't know what direction to go to oh, uh, yes. we, we go to the scene uh, we're at the biscuit meeting uh, Rachel's around <laughs> A, Rachel. just a, poor Rachel. Rachel. Yeah, Rachel's probably one of the funnest characters to watch this right. season. Yeah. Last season, was, if you guys followed the show, she was more, she had it together. She was, you know, designing uh, uh, the hotel towards the end, and mm -hmm. she had a relationship with a guy that, you know, had a little bit of money. She seemed okay. Mm -hmm. She's struggling now. She's in a, in, a, in a job that she doesn't like, and she also is around, like, kiss asses, and we've all been around the kiss oh, asses. MG. How do you continue to live with the kiss asses, you know, is kind of a thing, so. It was interesting. She was in last year her, her 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 business you know was on the upside and and her personal life was on the downside now it's like her personal life is on the upside and her business life is on the downside so what I love about this show is is really questioning what does it mean to make it I mean what are we talking about are we mm -hmm. talking when we talk about make it in America mm -hmm. are we talking about materially mm -hmm. are we talking about you know spiritually like what are we really talking about when we say make it well, I think with her, she's asking herself that every day. Like she doesn't, <laughs> like she can't she even put herself on one side. Do. She because she got the good job. Right. Remember, she's sitting there with Domingo, and mm -hmm. she's like, "Well, I did get the good job, but that's not making her happy. Right. She's right. trying to find she what makes her job. happy. She's she was at work on time. time. She was right. she, she was dating the Jewish dude. Now yeah. she's late smoking weed and dating yeah. the black dude. Yeah. 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 I'm not saying that there's a quinky dink. Really? No, but I think we all get to a point in our lives where we're like. 
Okay, what I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm gonna like, smoke at weed that point, and date the black yeah, man. Like, That's what like, I'm like, 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 she's like, this show's like, about me. Like, who am I? Like, yeah. I understand you, Rachel. I feel your pain. Yeah. And even uh, going on with her relationship with Domingo, you see it's shifting. Like, what started out as being more like interesting and fun. And fun and now it's like that little awkward kiss. It was like, oh, I, I was awkward. definitely gonna get to that. Yeah. Right. They needed a spicy it's funny. sex right. game. Like, yeah, they need to spice their life. They need to spice their life. They need to read your Twitter. It's very inspiring. But it was like, you know. We will definitely get to that awkward moment and how Rachel is kind of not into Domingo anymore, or we'll see. Uh, let's first go to, uh, in, in the office, uh, Nancy's in there. She says, uh, I guess the guy's name is Jason, the, the contact or whatever. Oh, Jason left back to LA. They seem interested, like, oh, well, what do we need to do? Let's set up an iChat. Like, they are so, like, tuned in. And he and, and this is when I instantly was like, there might not be this person. She is just dangling, like you had said earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was what I took from that scene, is that Definitely. she might not be as powerful or willing. She doesn't willing. do conference calls, as she puts... Uh, if you're about your business, you'll do a conference phone. call, you know? <laughs> she puts the girls on speakerphone. But also, just a note for the season in general, you guys, don't you see that every time Ben and Cam are in Nancy's office, like, all right, this is what this episode's going to be about. Mm-hmm. It's setting up the yes. plot line. Yeah. It's, just, mm-hmm. it's great to see them in that office, like, what are they going to get into well, now? You're, wonder, you're wondering if she's just hazing them, like, I yeah. feel that I'm going to get yeah. it for you, it's but, a, it but, definitely but is. Well, you're not just going to walk in here. Yeah. 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 Like, you're going to have to carry some coffee, and you're going to have to you're gonna do have to do some internship before I just give it to you, right? Or is she just full of it? That, yeah. that, I mean, that's really. Or she just wants a little taste right. of Ben oh, too. You know, there's I, always, there's I definitely a, think there's it was always a that. She got her taste. In the you know, back of that we, we talked about the St. Louis girls and how uh, no you, New York cabbie letting you get away with that, by the way. Either. Although, oh, it, although, that, although, that, although that, it, that, that, ain't no Muslim cabbie gonna let you. Although that scene was so fun, though. But yeah, we'll get to we'll get to we'll get to all the the we'll get to that Monfongo stuff in just a second. But the two St. Louis girls do call in, and then you know she's they Ben. Right. Cam want to get some of that, and he's mm-hmm. like, "Oh, we can always deliver." Yeah, you know, what I, mean? I, I just love that line. Well, yeah. Ben and Cam, they're still about business any way that they can be, and the girls call. In the episode, we start to see Nancy being a little like, "Well, why did you kind of go behind my back?" Well, Nancy, you 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 not, took you the phone this out. So if they you yeah, if you their own hands. yeah, right. if you put the phone call out to two young aggressive hustlers who you and these are two St. Louis girls who are connected in the industry mm-hmm. to, to what they want to do. One of two things, probably both will happen. Either they're going to get that connection for the job, and then maybe they'll get... Someone's going to get laid. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I was going to use another word with the word job in there, but okay. Um, (laughs) So she kind of did it to herself, you know. Um, I liked the scenes, all the scenes with the girls, uh, the St. Louis they girls. They were hilarious. They were adorable. Because it's so true to life. You know, mm-hmm. you just, you get in a, a strange city, or a big city, or, some, you know, a smaller town or whatever, and you go for broke, and they they did. Uh, the actress's name was Cameron Goodman. You've seen her on uh, Wild and Out. So I've actually seen her do a couple different things, interviewed her a couple times in the past on other web shows, so it's really cool to see her hit this, yeah, little, you know, big show. On a great show. Fun, fun character, yeah, too. Yeah, fun. Wouldn't you want to be, you know, whatever show it is, the crazy, we'll pick a city. Uh, she could from Tennessee and then you're in New York for one weekend. Imagine if that was you. Good times and bad decisions. Yeah, That's our motive. That's what happens. People get it mixed up. (laughs) You know, you go big in the small town, you go small in the big town. That's the way it should work. Yeah, I like that slogan. (laughs) We'll we'll go with that. That's why people get caught. Um, (laughs) Then we cut back to the... uh, (laughs) (laughs) Probably a lot. (laughs) Right. Um, Cut back to the titty bar and uh, Renee. Oh, right, right. I, thought, I thought you were the tech nerd. <laughs> no, no. no. He, he is storytelling, <laughs> analyzing as we go. Word by word. Before, yeah. before, What's in that coffee before, cup, <laughs> before we go to the strip club, um, Excuse me. real wow. quick, I wanted to talk two seconds about the scene where they're uh, in the uh, in stuffy, busy New York City, and just the two of them talking. I think this show won so much, uh, you know, as far as like the credibility and the reality of it. When you see Ben and Cam scenes. Those just, they're eating their sandwiches, there's a hundred people around them, and them asking the, each other, like, oh, should we do this, should we do that? I just, to me, feel, I don't know if you guys could connect to that, yeah, but... they rely no, on you're each back other. in season one. They, I mean, right. And that's what I like. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate yeah. HBO for going the new routes they're going to mm-hmm. and growing the show, but um, those just questions, should we do this, should we do that? I mean, that's that's fun, the and that's what you do. The season you was know? character development, and now this season is like, the plot is thickening. Things are getting higher. Yeah, when they're talking, you feel like you're getting let in on an industry the it's same like way Mary, you did right. with Entourage. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or like when I did the comeback, Great you were getting point. let so in right. on how do you make a reality show. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. So that's mm-hmm. what a- HBO is, is is really done exceptionally well, you know, better than any any other um, network out there. You know, it, it, 
you, you it, it's almost edutainment. You know, yeah. there's the sex yeah. and all that and all that fun to get us adults yeah. like watching. But then you're like, wow, I'm also seeing how the how the film business works, how right. the clothing right. business works, right. how the TV business works. Yeah, right. and, I mean, and the question is, do people that like Mass America do they want to see more like, oh, I want to see what it's like to be a star, or do they want to see something like this, which isn't? They're not at that successful level yet, but it's more relatable to so many people. They want both. I think, yeah, I think we want both. I think we want to feel like connected to it. We want to relate to the characters, but we also want to aspire yeah. as well. Like, you know, everybody has a dream. Everybody wants to pursue something. So it's cool to see that connection with the characters. Well, I think exactly. I like about this show is you will see successes. There's no way we right. can watch, th you know, show, three, yeah. four, five seasons without right. Right. those big successes. But mm -hmm. then we're going to drop. I mean, I feel mm -hmm. like that's where they'll go. You have to have that. So Very true. But the, that's the, true the about producers life. have said we're not going to give it to them easy. Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. what I love. Yeah. Yeah. Entourage, exactly. it was that, like, that, it was, you know yeah. what? That's they got thing. it. You got the star. Yeah, there's no power getting them into the club. And now it's like, no, we just know the bouncer. Right. Yeah. But, you know, there's another there's another set of that too which is morally like like we don't the the, the beauty of this show and and even entourage up to the last you you didn't know where the show was going to mm -hmm. fall like morally Right. You know, where is it going to leave us? Is it going to be this happy, shiny ending where people who do the right thing, you know, get get the good and the people who do the wrong thing get the bad or not? You right. know, because we all know there's lots of circumstances mm -hmm. in life where mm -hmm. people doing the wrong thing seem to get materially ahead. That's an exactly. interesting point. And, yeah. and, and in this show, we don't know, mm -hmm. you know, which is, I think that's what makes it so titillating and exciting. You're, you're like not you're sure where this seat. show is yeah. really going like to fall. what's going to yeah. happen. Mm -hmm. it, it definitely was titillating, as you said, JC. <laughs> <laughs> is he going to say? Is he gonna say a it? second ago? Okay, so the taxi club. cab ride, like, is he gonna get more orders, right. or is he gonna, or is she gonna shut him off because right. you can't because mix pleasure and business? business. You know? Oh, which yeah. way makes me want to watch yeah. next yeah. episode. Yeah, oh, I'm so, ready. I'm front row. Yeah, next you're, Sunday. you're plugged in. Um, <laughs> I let, can't wait. Let's, 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 let's <laughs> real quick. <laughs> yeah, that was the Monfongo we saw. We saw some serious Monfongo. Let's go to the strip club for one second. Renee's there. All he cares about is Debbie. Am I the only one who thought that Debbie was gonna be one of the strippers? Nobody thought that. No. Oh, no. I thought that they were going to like show that's her she, down a pole. That's what <laughs> wow. she did. That's a good point. Wow. I, I, I did that. In 1990, in a raincoat in a strip club. That's true. I in 1994, she, she probably Debbie like, would have done that. Yeah. Yeah. I think she's damn near said why she's done she everything she but that. Point, she why was up. she there? She popped up. Popped up. Why? Why there? Why at a titty club in a raincoat? Good question. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be answered next uh, next, <laughs> next episode. episode. <laughs> Anyways, the strip club is really just a scene to show that Renee is just just getting whipped. I call yeah. Monfongo. Yeah. <laughs> Everything that was awkward is yeah turned into right, Monfongo. And then we go to Rachel and Domingo. That's right. right? Oh yeah. Um, and, and you know it's funny because we've all said the same thing. They're just not gelling. Domingo is adorable. Uh, they're, they're talking about <laughs> they're the league. It's like so adorable, but he's not going to win. He's I'm not. Sorry. Yeah. You, you can tell that. You though. know, I thought as soon as it was out in the Ooh, open. Why can't Domingo win? Because. You want Domingo to win? I, no, Rachel I, I started say, sleeping, yeah. Yeah. Rachel started sleeping with anything. Domingo based on her feelings with with Ben. Like a rebound. Oh, so you're thing. saying winning is if she stays with him. Right. Right. Because right. Domingo has actually expressed that he has right real there, feelings. In the end, he's not going to win. She's, she's do you think not, that, do you think she's those not real She's not emotionally connected yeah, to him. Yeah, but he had real feelings for her? He's saying that he does. Like, I think I he think thinks he that there's like a chemistry going on. <laughs> I think he's also concerned about his relationship with Ben, too. I think that's still oh, weighing is. on his Under heart. Under the radar. So yeah. I don't think they're going to go full throttle <laughs> with it. You know I don't think that kiss was winning, though. Yeah, that kiss was not winning. But they both, I realized that, though. That was both of them. I think they because both the, were like, uh, okay. The mystique is over. The mystique is gone. It's yeah, not yeah. fun. She said, it. she said it to her friend on the on the train. They're, she not, was like, I they're think. not hiding out, not being able to tell Ben. Now right. Ben knows. It was anymore. an active rebellion against Ben. Well, he's got a cute dog in a booming it's business. Oh, oh, yeah. Girl. I mean, come really? on. Yeah. <laughs> she can't, she's not going to take him serious. Weed but he is adorable, though. I love Kit Kat. He's got a nice pad, too. I'm actually interested to see. I like the kind of. Oh, never mind. No, no, no. You're into <laughs> I'm it. just saying his pad was I'm cool, just interested right? to see where Domingo's character will even go because if it's not tied into Rachel, he's sort of building that friendship back. You know, where does he go with the with the whole show? So hmm, that's a good, he's uh, gonna get Renee in trouble. He's gonna get Renee in trouble. Yeah, because he saw he busted out his little um, Rasta okay. weed spray. Yeah. And so he's not gonna listen. He's gonna go against Cam's back and continue to promote it. And it's gonna, gonna do well. You know, and yeah. It's I, gonna gotta, do well. I gotta say something. You know, I know that the whole make it in America, we, we're focusing on you know the main characters and the clothing, but the thing is, is that like when you're when you're living in New York. And you smoke weed, so I've heard. <laughs> um, <laughs> Rumor like, has it. Say. Like, the, you know, you call John the plumber, and John c comes to fix the pipes. 
John really isn't a plumber, and he's not really there to fix the pipe. Like right. like guys like Domingo, it's like a whole subculture in New York. So I've heard, and <laughs> it, it's like that's making it in you. I mean, these guys have he's amazing his money. pads. So I've heard. Oh, right. Be, be, and, you're, and you're just like, wow. Well, we've I mean, talked is that about making it in America. No, well, we've talked about that on this show here. We're on our after show, like. What are you doing? Like you're doing your straight and narrow, but what do you have to do to this sort of? Is, this is my hustle. point. You have to this compromise. is my point. You're hustling. This is my point. No one made it in America when With America that. was was started. No one did, no one Very did anything true. legal. Without hurting there was nothing done say. illegal at all. Illegal. Barter. So, so barter. it's kind of like you could call it Cross bartering. Yeah. We're gonna do a whole bunch of illegal stuff, set up this country, and then make people follow Kill. the rules. Right. Yeah. And it hasn't well, really worked and, out. And that's tie, all I'm tying saying. into what you're saying, <laughs> history that's shows. That's why this show is amazing because yeah. it's showing that you know sometimes it's not the straight path. Well, just, sometimes you gotta. I don't think anybody's made it in America without cutting a few throats. the rules a little bit. Just look at what Ben and Cam do in the next scene. They go up to the girls and it's like, all right, we want to pitch the the line, but no, they know with the truth. They gotta get them to that club. Right. They gotta show a good time. Right. Love those right. scenes. It's like, like I said, we won't call it hustling. We can call it bartering. Maybe okay. it's a lot of bartering. Right. You know, that's that's sort of what you do. Socialism. But go, going to what you're saying, it's like, it's the moral compass, I guess, mm-hmm. is what it is. For, like, what's good for you? Like, are like if you could do things kind of, you know, on the low, and you're good with that, then cool, you've made it in America. If you are like, oh, I'm gonna do away with Rasta Monster because I need to be back with Debbie. Well, then that's your making in America. And that's what we see on this show, that not everyone has the same uh, drive. For me, personally, I dive more into the Ben and Cams of the world of this show, mm-hmm. you know, because I like where they always go. They right. put the clothing mm-hmm. line first. They're relentless. Right. But it's that's their, the at, at being as young as they are, I think they're like 27, 28. That works for them, and that's their making it in America. But for Renee, mm-hmm. no, Rastamansa could take a hike because he wants to make sure... Possibly this could be the chick, you know, this could be his, his queen. So well, we see that when he's buzzing at Debbie's door, just like right. I'm begging, yeah. my, I'm on my knees, yeah. I'm begging, yeah. just like get that out was of very here. Very humble you know? of him. Very cute. Um, okay, As yeah, chicks yeah. Chicks like that stuff, fellas. And then he goes <laughs> up, and then she says, "When you like, make a mistake, beg." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess. And then she, I uh, guess, <laughs> I guess. Beg. I'm moving on. She's saying that she's no. Oh, oh so they oh, oh, that means you don't make mistakes. No, I don't. I don't make any mistakes. <laughs> you don't have to, you don't have to on this show, we're all Wait, perfect. Is that right? If he you're in a relationship, you don't make mistakes. Is that what? I don't know. No, she's saying first thing. She's the expert. I'm just trying to. Beg. I don't know. We thought it was a date. Yeah, you, know, is a day. you, 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 you do got to follow the spicy tweets if you want to get connected with all that. Um, no, no. Renee is begging. He's begging. He's banging the door and he's begging. He finally gets up there. She really doesn't let him up because of you know wanting to talk, but it's a. Uh, her expressing how Nilda is stepping out with chicks now. Right, but mm-hmm. look how you refer to him making it in America now as his love, his relationship. It so seems, look at yeah. what he has to do in order to get his love back. He has to manipulate the situation. By who? Mm-hmm. By how? Go after her daughter. To win so, her love. Yes, exactly. So that he can get her affection back. So if oh, he I'm wins the child's respect. I was going to say. If he gets the child's really? respect, he therefore no, wins the but woman. Manipulation. It, it, it works. It's a form of manipulation. He Not if he, gen- would, no, but he, he generally. No, but he generally has been Ca- hasn't he been generally caring about her in well, a way? Is it not manipulative to hold over her head some information that you have about her sleeping with someone? That's manipulative. In order to get her to like do the dishes on the last episode. Wow. He, that was a threat. Yeah. That's good parenting. <laughs> that is not manipulation. That is good parenting Cheers 101. <laughs> right. Negotiation. Negotiation. You have no children. Don't talk to me about <laughs> that. That's very true. Don't talk to me about manipulation. You have to manipulate your four year old? Abs- every day. Yeah. Kids, I'm sure. Kidding me? But no, what was amazing though was to see the relationship or to see him talk to her daughter I don't know, remember her name but uh, that was a Nil- nice Nilda. moment yeah. that you know it was. he talked to her about you know being okay with who you are and yeah. and, and that's why she kind of broke too so I thought that well, was a nice well, well, moment yeah we're definitely going to get to that that's just Nilda saying hey you know there's judgment on me and he's saying hey there's mm-hmm. judgment on me for being a yeah, thug or whatever judgment in the world so it, it definitely could be, be manipulation because there is that holding over some information but I mean, I think we're gonna see Renee does care, and he that's does. that's yeah. what's I cool. Think, I that's, think he's growing up on it. I think he care. He might care more about the child. I mean, not oh, maybe more, but I think it's way up there, way up. Yeah, there. it's you grown. Maybe he'll, yeah. maybe like, he you know, feels like a father figure. You know, he's he's growing into that responsibility. I love to factor. see the uh, New York scenes. You know, they're on the train. This is Rachel and Lulu. Uh, they're talking about Domingo, so they're just kind of mm-hmm. doing the girl talk. 
about Domingo, and it's just evident that Rachel's not into it. And Lulu's right. just kind of like the uh, confidant right there. Lulu definitely has that Sarah Jessica Parker sex in the city I worked with Lulu. I was going to say that. Tell what me about this actor. I, I, I want to know more about it. Yes, on um, Kaboom. Kaboom. On a film that we did, a Greg Araki film. Uh, that uh, went to Cannes, did great, got nominated for Artios uh, Award, which is the um, basically the the Oscar for um, uh, casting. Okay. Um, and yeah. did she have that fiery hair in Kaboom? Yeah, yeah. She her did. her, so her name was literally the redheaded girl. That wow. was that was. What's her? Uh, what's do you know her actress? I mean, her real name or um, Lulu on the show? <laughs> we'll we'll IMDb her later. Um, <laughs> But she's great. Okay, good. She might be Li- a rising... Liber- Liber- Libertine. Is, okay, good. It's, um, um, she looks she, like she would have a kooky name, name like that. And she might, be a, yeah. she might yeah. be a rising Love star it. because uh, I like her character. I've liked her character since day one. Mm-hmm. Like, she plays a very... Uh, like, she's meaningful in this show, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And she ties into a lot of things. She ties into the Cam thing. She ties into the, uh, you know, uh, Rachel being, like, a best friend or whatever. Um, so they go to the party in Bushwick. And mm-hmm. uh, Tim of the Neanderthals, really? he's over there. Uh, and they're just kind of talking. They're just kind of getting down to business. And uh, he's talking about expanding his business out there. Um, and Rachel seems to be interested. Rachel seems to be kind of taken by him because mm-hmm. he's different. He's odd. Mm-hmm. He's unique. You know. He's new. Um, and, you know, their clothing line that they had basically was, was appreciated more by everybody because they are the former junkies, right? Mm-hmm. Isn't that what right, they're kind of saying? Right, they were So, look, they are really going to work on trying to find Lulu's name. Yeah, he's like, he, he wants, wants to know to, the he, name. He, he wants, wants to know. To know. He's like, I want to make sure that... Yeah, we're shouting out Liberty. Right. right. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're basically just there. We're at the party. Rachel continues to get into them. The same thing that is drawing their their clothing line, mm-hmm. it, Rachel's into, right? I right. mean, we're, gonna, we're definitely going to see that. Um, so we go back to the city. Ben and Cam take the girls out, and they're ready to have a good time. And Capo, because he has a little cash for now, mm-hmm. uh, he, he's trying to live no. it up. He's like, all right, no, no. Did night. you you saw what he's happened? Like, his car. Did you got guys? The car. Yeah, oh, he yeah, got the car. Yeah. They shut him off. And Nancy oh. had to well, pay Well, he was arrogant for before that moment. No, I think he's, the government came in and took all his he, money. He, right. I think, uh, I think uh, he got frozen. But Nancy had to pay, and that was just like, oh, that's what I'm man. saying. Capo got frozen. The woman has to. But in front of everybody, though, they had to know that his car was the car. Capo's thing is so interesting because I would say I'd have compassion for him instantly because you're let's say trying to make it and then like you run a card and it gets declined like life is you know that happens i guess but i mean my point is Kappel's like been the money guy he's been right. mm-hmm. he's been borderline arrogant because he's been able to be like well no one really digs me as a person but man i could buy out the bar you know right. um and we heard last episode that things are going to happen economically and for him started. and now it's happening with mm-hmm. those st louis girls that i wonder how ben that's going to unfold like in the show like how him being broke watch. now is going to affect <laughs> them how what i, I wonder how, how him being broke now is gonna affect their i would say it's like their, anything their you you make a friend with somebody you get a connection with somebody off maybe not the right reasons maybe you know because it was a money thing mm-hmm. they couldn't get their clothing line started capo comes in and now they're friends i don't I, you just can't turn your back on the person right. well, they had that conversation in the, yeah. in the cab well last, she's saying last she's saying is that gonna happen or not are they gonna be like, friends is that or true? not is he really gonna stay i, I think I, I, my prediction would be ben yeah ben's gonna stay stay down for for capo yeah. it seems yeah, like I believe it too. you you think i think he's or? gonna stay down for it i think capo's gonna come back and he's gonna give him a hundred million dollars oh that'd and, be, and then we turn into entourage that quickly all right turtle what do you want i'll just buy it for you yeah you want a tequila percentage of your Yeah. Um, it's cool to see the juxtaposition though as you know Ben and Cam are partying it mm-hmm. up and living it with up the with girls, these girls with St. Louis at the same time then you got Tim and Rachel mm-hmm. just getting a little closer and it's like you get the, the yeah. bike thing going on oh, I love like, the bike scene oh yeah the bike scene I'm was nominating awesome. that as the best was, look at a connection right like, here oh, a connection you guys know that she's gonna probably like you know oh, get I, affectionate with the, sure. the, the apple tomato mm-hmm. pickle guy yeah and she's gonna <laughs> Tim. Slash, slash. Tim. he's a flash guy too right and he's going to and she's gonna pitch his pickles right she's gonna a spicy little I mean, information interpret for you. that how you guys would like <laughs> uh, but, uh, dirty minds in the she's room gonna pitch his luck. pickle to uh, her biscuit yeah Okay. <laughs> well, uh-huh. I don't know how to you move on from that. that. <laughs> I will just yeah. say, Nilda, you get a pickle between your biscuit. You better. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try my. I'm gonna try my best here. <laughs> Nilda, biscuit magazines. <laughs> <laughs> Nilda may not like the pickles anymore. 
There we go. There's the transition. Whoa, whoa. That okay. was a great transition. I Her get bisexuality. It. Working right. on it. I was working on that one. Okay. Right. So yeah, we, we we go to a scene. Actually, I like the way the show does like photographs first, oh, and then love that. that. Yeah. Yeah. They did the little so we, hangover thing. Is, they gave us yes. a amazing. glimpse of what's going mm-hmm. on. So yeah. That we can see and then we everything. actually and and it, what it does, I think, watching it is it takes you to that place. You know, it's right. like it's they, a, it tells you a story instantly. So it's like boom, 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 and then we see Nilda with, with some females that are you know definitely not the you know the spicy muddy look at all. <laughs> uh, everything opposite of what you wear on a daily is, is kind of, you know, they looked more like me than you, you know, so there's that. Um, and Renee uh, asks her, they're in the car, and says, uh, you know, well, first of all, she kind of, he has a little resistance because these other girls, th- these chicks, are, are not wanting him to kind of talk to her, you know. Uh, maybe they thought that was the father. I'm not really sure where that was from, or they're just real protective of this girl. Either way, it just looked like a bad crowd, you know, necessarily to be around. Well, I'm, what was out on the streets, it, you know? Yeah, girls with baseball caps and and, and a girls, transvestite, right? And, and with a yeah, man's voice. And, and girls, like, oh, did, did we see that too? Yeah. yeah, it was a transvestite. Right. Those are the ones you have to watch out for. Once they hit the like feminist literature 101, yeah, when they're like, yeah, they all go gay. And, and see, the, this is in that college, scene. I thought little, that they were going to show us that they're trying to get her on the track. I wasn't sure, like the way that because they had a a masculine Mm -hmm. lesbian and then a transvestite together with her and in the previous scene she was in or the previous episode we saw her in a catholic suit yeah I think that Renee going exactly to that place like exactly what he had to see what we all saw together that's where I think a little bit of the God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be compassionate for her, you know. Even though it's essentially like you say about Debbie, I don't know. I think Renee's gonna be a good guy well, on this show. Yeah, Renee, he says, you know, I understand mm-hmm. what it's like for people to see you or yes. something you're mm-hmm. not. That's the line. That's that what we says. were talking about while we were watching right. the show. Yeah, he's been judged as a thug mm-hmm. for how many years, and now she's gonna be judged, and you know, she's just trying to evaluate herself. But I you went know? to Catholic school. That didn't really surprise me <laughs> at all. <laughs> Oh, I went to Catholic sense. school too, and that's you, surprised. You went, to, you went to Westchester. <laughs> I went to you sure Catholic must have went your elementary luck. school. She went to Westchester. Oh, Westchester High School. Comments. I comments. went to Saint Bernard, so, which is right behind. So, let her me look, tell you, her uh, look screams uh, Westchester. How do you, how do you guys let me think? tell you, a Catholic <laughs> skirt don't mean a whole. As we so, how do you Barry? think that Debbie is going to eventually? Do you think she's going to embrace her being bisexual, or she's going? How do you think she's going to handle this? Because she's got to admit it openly. To well, her mother here's eventually. my thing with with Nilda herself. Is Nilda just doing what she's doing? This is like the new her. You know, mm-hmm. she wants to be with women more. Or is Nilda also I, like staying out in the middle of the night and and doing bad things? You know, I think it's it's that's more Debbie's concern. Right. But I think Debbie is definitely from the old school of like you know, my, her daughter. She she's like shocked. Like my daughter cannot be gay. I mm-hmm. think that's part of what Debbie's going through. But I think it's just a phase. She said in the car with um, when she was in the car with Renee, Renee, she said, when I'm with a woman, I feel, you know, it's just, I feel real and I feel like I'm there. But when I'm with a guy, you know, so I think it's just a phase. I think she just has to kind of meet the right person. So I, I don't know. I don't think she, I don't, I think it's just a phase she's going through right oh, now. Oh, that she's not necessarily into women? I, yeah, I think it's just a phase. I mean, she seems like she's well, just she exploring said, right didn't now. Didn't you know what you liked when you were 16 or 17? Like she asked, oh, Renee she asked Renee, that, Renee, yeah. yeah. But I think that when you're experiencing like that, she's still trying yeah, to figure out what she likes more. I think she's just more. trying to figure it well, out. Yeah, well, if she met a guy that made her feel real, then maybe. Oh, and maybe. Be open to that. Let's, let's open up another idea. Maybe it was with, yeah. uh, it was with Wilfredo. Right. Well, let's open up another idea we see every episode debbie talking about i've been with thugs i've been with thugs i was i had a baby at 14 years old you know that's not nothing wrong with that but Mm -hmm. she's just debbie's damn near anti-men herself you know so maybe nilda's just seen such like ugliness with Mm -hmm. relationships of a man and a a woman and and she's just trying something so something there's a lot to that you know because debbie debbie seems i like debbie's character she seems so fun in this show and i want i want her to quote unquote i want her to win or whatever but she's coming with baggage every episode we learn about her being a video girl you know (laughs) i could have used a different word but you know you know and and every episode i've dated thugs like you so that's that's different. she likes what she likes though. No, she doesn't. You I, I was, you chose a, a reformed thug. You knew exactly what you were doing. Yeah. He's well, he's hard. working on Are being you, reformed. Is anyone hey, ever reformed? He's reformed <laughs> and he's got to pay those bills. <laughs> so right. will he be reformed? But when the bills come, you know, calling, you might go back to your exactly. old ways. So, um, you know, I have no, uh, you know, obsession for there to be a spinoff with this show because I like all the characters. But if there was one, I think Debbie and Renee is such a fun little uh, yeah, situation. That would, that would definitely yeah. be fun. Yeah. Um, so let's go to me, you, Jesse, I don't know about you guys, this favorite scene on the show. Yes, oh. sir. That uh, night bike ride. When oh, I got my apartment man. recently, that was so cool. 
Oh, uh, just, just, just a little. Ru- ru- <laughs> oh, I have a second favorite. Uh, oh, it's well, a tie at the okay. End. I'm sorry, the Monfongo. What am I? I'm just. A, <laughs> okay, yeah. two guys agree that their favorite scene well, in the whole thing with all those titties I, and I that the taxi ride. ride. I your talk. favorite <laughs> scene was the taxi ride. Well, I, in fairness, I, mean, I, 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 I spoke. I spoke for him. In fairness, we're gonna get to. We're gonna get to the Monfongo. It's top one. That's really the best. Jason, don't blow your load. We're gonna get to the Monfongo in one second. I was surprised. I'm just trying to catch up. I I just heard something that struck me. (laughs) (laughs) One of the favorite scenes is the bike ride because it was just damn cool. I wanted to ride a bike. I was like, oh, we need to organize something like that in LA. I'm so tired. Let's do it. At night and just go crazy. Yeah, they do it in Los Angeles too. Um, It's a cool thing. And and, uh, the way it works so well in this show is Tim says, oh, Lulu, you know, you want to do it. Lulu's like, I'm getting the car service Uh and I'm going back to the city. Rachel's like, this is, these are the people that I need to be around. Mm -hmm. So. It was a cool vibe. Um, like I said, when I got my first little apartment, I didn't want it. The refrigerator wasn't even as important to me as getting a bike because it's a cool thing to be tied into the city. So. Well, I think she wanted more of the connection with them. And she, 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 they had, they, he admitted to her having happiness, and that's what she wants. Yeah. She, they have something that she wants. Oh, he, he basically said, I have happiness, yeah. but judge me if you and want. And she doesn't. Yeah. And so being around him, I think, gets her closer to that, she believes. Yeah, I think in New York, you're time, so too. surrounded by concrete, and, and you know, like everything's basically dead around you. That, like, like anything you can do for mm. life. I mean, I think that's why people party so hard. Like the bike thing. <laughs> when I was in New York, I definitely rode the bike. I mean, part of it was just the thrill of like riding in all that traffic and, mm-hmm. you know, it was almost like getting one, hit. Yeah, yeah. it was one way York, to get a little adrenaline because hit? there's nothing to do Is there. Somebody like always trapped. gets hit in a movie in New York. Somebody always gets hit while they're on their bike. I'm walking what? here. I'm walking. <laughs> <laughs> but that makes the city alive. I don't know. Yeah. That's why I like watching the show. It makes the city I mean, so that's alive. Crazy those, driving those, in New York. Those chances, those risks. You know, LA, the only time I see people out are right around now during Halloween. Right. I never see nobody walk in the oh, streets. That's come true. Down to yeah, Venice, it's, it's, I mean, Venice, 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 in fairness, is one of the greater you know, little areas. Yeah. Beaches, yeah. Um, you can't even drive a car anymore with so many bikes, man. Yeah. No, well, plus, I'm, I think that scene is a good look at, I hate to drop the H word, but the hipster movement coming up yeah. mm-hmm. is just like, you know, you, this guy is self-sustainable, he's growing mm-hmm. his own food and everything, they're riding bikes, yes. and then and then she, Rachel, is corporate, she's getting bored at right. work, she's like she wants everything. to just take off the, you know, It's freedom, it's freedom. Freedom. And it was shot well, yeah. too. Like, I, I think I love, they, it. Shot, I love yeah. it. White people call that hipster. Like, black people call that poor, man. <laughs> <laughs> you got to grow all your own shit and ride a bike. Uh, I hate to tell you. Uh, I hate to tell cool. you. That's called poor. Um, <laughs> that's called not making it in America. Yeah, I wear a snapback because I can't afford the fitteds, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> that's what I'm saying, man. It's yeah, a fun vibe, right. nonetheless. Uh, so then we go back to party mode. We go uh, to, the, to the club again. So this is the first time Ben and Domingo kind of talk. You know, right. I didn't know that where was it was cool. going to go at all. Um, but Domingo, he's the one who steps up. And mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, it was his deal. But um, I didn't know he was going to apologize like he did. And he apologized a lot. I think what happened was when he felt that kiss with Rachel, he was like, mm, this That's might not I be what it. I thought it was. Right. Let me get my friend back. Oh, I think yeah. that was weighing on him anyway. I yeah. think he was. Yeah. You could tell he wasn't confident about that. You know, the decision in the first place. Right. So I think that was the moment he was like, you know, my friend is more important, and I, I like that he went to him. That was and very humble. That was good. Yeah, it, it was, was a it was, tale of two heads. You know what I mean? One yeah. was thinking the first time, mm-hmm. the other one was thinking the second. You know, I mean, it's you know, I think guys, we've all experienced and, and he didn't the heat of the moment and all that. Yeah, he didn't, plan, he, he didn't plan. He didn't plan. Right, it just count. happened. There was no. <laughs> <laughs> he decided not to count. I don't at know the anything moment. about not counting. Uh, <laughs> it was the weed, yeah. It was you blame it on the weed in that situation. Yeah, yeah. Got you yeah. And then trying to deal with those consequences, like mm-hmm. you say, the real life about the sto- this show, you know, is what connects because yeah. you're like that was not planned at all. That was mm-hmm. that was sort of a mistake. Then they were like, oh, maybe it's not a mistake. Maybe this is a thing. People fall on top of each other all the time. Yeah, <laughs> land somewhere. <laughs> she had to fall. She had to land somewhere. It just happened Pickles to be my lap. Um, so we go. We're at the club. Uh, Capo's partying. He's having a blast with those drunk girls. Uh, living it up in NYC. Now this other kid walks in wearing the same sweater, the Asian kid, right? right? Yeah, the crisp sweater, and, uh, and they love it. Yeah, the ladies drunk. They love their, it. Yeah, they're pretty. They're pretty hammered at this point. Mm-hmm. They they go. Hot they, guy, nice body, fly sweater. Wears it like perfectly to a crisp. Yeah, and they're like, oh, they noticed him. Nice. It's the man, yeah. not the hey, clothes. All of a and, and Capo's wearing it like <laughs> I mean, super. He was fine. He's like, fine. Oh. He's like, he was oh. fine. He, he was almost money. as fine as Jason. Almost as fine as Jason. You know, I what? think he might give him a run for as many. Uh-oh. Actually, you know what? I, know. I feel like I'm looking like Capo right now. I need to get my crisp on. I will be in the gym all day tomorrow. Anybody could sell anything, there would be no models. 
<laughs> Very true. It's not the clothes, trust me. <laughs> well, hey, when we talk about the song being uh, the song being perfect in the Aloe Black song, uh, uh, it actually not the Aloe Black song. The other song that was uh, leading off uh, in the promos for this season was uh, talking about the man don't make the clothes. The clothes. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is the exact lyric? I know. I know you've followed me on this the the man don't make the clothes the, no the, the clothes don't make the man the man that makes the clothes yeah so that was in every single hbo commercial um you know so it, it does tie in it's definitely a good tie in there mm-hmm. um we have uh, so yeah they, those girls are into it hence we've sold crisps to these right. to Yay, these st louis so girls yeah, yeah. Like, yes. big moments <laughs> and you know yes. it, it wasn't a manipulation move at all i don't think you know that was just worked. that all happened yeah but here's the problem now now they got to come up with 500 units exactly they got to get there Nancy That's will help story. them do that Wait, because and, and now she really? her repu- now her reputation is on the no. line. F, F all that. Nancy, who cares what she thinks? It's it's them. It's Ben and Cam. Last episode, I wanted to talk about this. Last episode, she goes, oh, well, you'll just need to reshoot something without mm-hmm. you guys in it. And he said, oh, well, when does this guy come in town? Tuesday. Oh, we'll shoot it on the weekend. And this just this got me. I wanted to talk to you guys about this. Nancy laughs and chuckles like, oh, you'll just do it. As if she maybe maybe she's on a high plateau of yeah, her career, but is. but and maybe she had a, a silver spoon handed to her or whatever golden spoon handed to her. But she definitely forgot what you do when you're in that you're situation. Hungry. Yeah, you're so, hungry. I, not Nancy, thirsty. Nancy, not hungry. Yeah, thirsty. <laughs> not thirsty. Not hungry. <laughs> Nancy. Every episode that goes by, I'm just a little less interested. I think she's playing them to a degree. She only wants to bang Ben. That's it. That's her thing. I think but the character is life. very that's, relatable to no, no, a lot of that people in America. No, no, I no, I appreciate it, but I I'm just relate. saying she's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, she's oh, dangling. Yeah, she's, she's her, power. her power. We are dangling again. Yeah. Dangling. Is, is that the key word of this episode? Dangling. Dangling that pickle. <laughs> dangling. Dangling that pickle. <laughs> uh, different, different story. And, and, and back, back to the no pickle is it's Renee right. and Nilda again. Okay, so they're back at the house. Mm. Uh, Renee uh, takes, takes Nilda back. They talk and express, uh, you know, everything that uh, what's her name is going through, and then they start talking to each other. Debbie starts talking to Renee, and she opens up. This is where we know she's a video girl, which was quite evident anyway. But we learned that she uh, had been just treated bad time and time again, and had to wear the uh, the short little shorts and all that good stuff. So mm-hmm. I don't know where that's gonna go, but you know, she's honest, he's honest, so they're bound to hopefully make it work at this point. And he gets to stay for dinner. And I was gonna say, yeah, he, he stayed for dinner. Yeah. So yeah. the manipulation works. The first version of what Monfongo is supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, and I love how the daughter Believe was that. like, you know, ew, looking at the kids, right? Remember, yeah. she was yeah. like, ew. But meanwhile, she's slobbering right. it up or right. something yeah. like. In the French like, B, B girl. Right. <laughs> like, talk about it. Uh. Uh, we go back to the club, St. Louis girls. They're buzzing. They're drunk. You know, and they. Uh, it's the Kristen and Kirsten or whatever they are. Um, and they're the out of towners. They're digging the whole vibe. They uh, all want to go to some type of after party or the club. The, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, the they want to go to her after room. party at their room. She's like after party in my room. So they're room. taking the but guys you, back with them with Nancy. Well, you know there was a there was a little little comment that Renee said on the sly that that to me summed the whole thing up. And and I don't know if that was scripted or is that just a really good actor taking a look at what the episode was about and summing it up with one mm-hmm. like offhanded line, because. It's when they're looking at the car, right? They're in the suburbs, and the guy's like, oh, wow, was the video real and all that? But he's showing them the car, and Renee says something to the effect of, like, who cares about the, about the inside? It's the outside that counts, right? And he was talking about the van, right? He was talking about the graphics on the van. But to me, that rang so true of, you know, a very talented actor just deciding to sum up the whole thing. Because really, that's what this episode was all about. It was all about how the surface... You know, these these girls from Missouri, they don't care if he can deliver, really. They don't care what it looks like. They're just there to have a good time. Right. They got yeah. him a good time. Yeah. Then they see the cute boy yeah. with it on, and all of a sudden they love it because they love the they love the, they love the love visual like of the right. cute boy. The you know, it's just right. all outside. It's all out there. Like these, mm-hmm. This couple end up having, you know, this, this, this torrid sex thing in the back of the cab. They don't even know each other's last name. Right. You know what I mean? And everything was just, like, very physical, whereas, like, Renee... That storyline in this episode was the only one that got deep. Was the only thing that wasn't about the outside. It was it was mm-hmm. the opposite. It was like, hey, you brought me this fake stuff, mm-hmm. this stuff that was fake on the outside, and now you're trying to tell me that you're real. You know, it was about mm-hmm. proving 
that that this this uh, thing with that the he, earrings, yeah, yeah, yeah it all right. relates back that. to the fake and the well, real. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They're going right. to be the only relationship with substance because right. they're the older ones, and the younger ones are just in it for the moment. So right. you know, they they write a Facebook status. New York was crazy, you know, like, <laughs> something like that. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's almost like that's bound to happen because you got to go back home to your right, friends right. and say, oh yeah, we yeah, girl, we late. did, you know, is that how uh, we say uh, it? Uh, girl, <laughs> we did it. So we go. That's how I say it, buddy. That's how she says, girl. So it's it's so the. We go to that part, like I said. Uh, girls are drunk. They're all. Some people are going to the after hours, whatever, or the hotel. And uh, Nancy and Ben, just to make it awkward or interesting for the viewer, because we all want to see what's about to happen. We're yeah. excited about that. He gets aggressive. Uh, um, yeah. So he she didn't make a move that, at all. She didn't say nothing. No. He act. decides that he's she not going to gonna go. go a little bit. No. Yeah. He's not going to go with. Uh, yeah. the I knew. Chris, I knew when Kirsten he faced the car. I was like, okay, oh, yeah, he was plotting and happen. planning. He was How's plotting and planning. You knew what? Right. He, he was plotting and planning. Right time, right place. He has her to himself. Mm-hmm. He's been having the hots for her, and she's been kind of teasing they've him. Been, they've been having some chemistry mm-hmm. going on well, the whole time. I yeah, mean, no, she's she into it. She, well, she, she seemed to be yeah. into it. Yeah. She seemed real bitchy, though, in the in the car to begin with. She always I'm is. going over here. He's There's going that to, power thing. He's go, I'm going over here to my, you know, whatever, million-dollar estate. And he's going to... Somewhere, somewhere in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. So, oh, at that yeah. point, I was like, maybe she's not into it. So, damn, you know what? Good job, Ben, for just jumping up and yeah. saying, you know what? She really wants it, so go for it. And, mm-hmm. and, Good job, Ben. And that's where... And then she tried to, like, reject <laughs> him like, at oh, first. No. And, and then she's like, what am I thinking? Like, yeah. let oh, me do my want, cougar thing. Because she wanted control. Like, an underweight love of power. She is. She is. She All wanted it on her, her terms, so mm-hmm. she rejected him at first, and then when she was ready, she took yeah. it. Yeah. Plus, that's almost fun to watch. I mean, we saw that happen yeah. with Lulu and, and Cam. Lulu was mm-hmm. like, "It's not gonna happen. You're not gonna like hook up." Until but, and, then, the and, then, and then her shirt comes off, right. so that's gonna happen. But what was happening on your accord wasn't gonna happen. Right. So mm-hmm. maybe they just do that on this show to have us watch, and it's interesting I like or whatever. The female I power it. on this show. Um. So that's pretty much how I love the show how they ended it, though. That was a great way to end. I was like. Oh. There were the most you know what? Like noise in that room of us watching. We were all like, "What did you say?" You were like, "Oh damn, I was like, that's hot, that's hot, <laughs> that's hot." That's, that's hot. Cap that's confession hot. for yeah. real. Yeah. yeah, that's hot. I want to. That was it. the moan fongo. I'm gonna have to tweet bang. that later on yeah. today. Yeah. How that to have a spicy, and, spicy and, yeah. and, and, and that's how the that's how the show ended. So mm-hmm. it definitely had you thirsty for the next episode. For sure. Um, so we'll do predictions and all that. Um, I thought it was a great episode. Evaluations, real quick on the episode. What did you guys think? I I liked a lot of different aspects on it. Yeah. Authentic, hot. Um, oh, I, you've done that in the taxi, is what you're saying? Actually, <laughs> authentic. Wow, she did throw authentic no, out there. No, no, no. Well, I know. She she what kind of woman do you think she is? was clapping? What happens on the New York? <laughs> <laughs> what happens in New York stays in New York. Right on. Talking about the that's bike what, ride, you guys. That's what the, the bike yeah, ride. Yeah, oh, it's the bike ride. It's on the bucket list. We will do uh, predictions on the show. We will also do a quick little entertainment report, some Twitter news and all that good stuff. Let's hit a commercial real quick and uh, keep it going. How to make it in America, the after show right here on AfterBuzzTV.com. <laughs> Want to find out what the after buzz is about? Janice is a drama queen. This is the divide that is going to carry the series. Give us a call. 424-256-1729. 424-256-1729. This television and they want to be as dramatic as possible. I mean, it's Shakespearean. You never know what goes on behind closed doors. Find out why After Buzz TV is the number one source for after show content. Now, in the eyes of Jimmy... Nucky is a villain. 424-256-1729. 424-256-1729. Four, two, four, two, I mean, who would you guys rather hear that from? Your husband or your best friend? <laughs> the wig! The wig oh, will come that out. That wig. When the TV show is over, get your after buzz on. Oh, we are getting our after buzz on oh, the after show for How to Make It in America. Ronnie Jr. along with Spicy Marty, Jesse. We've got two great guests. Real quick, I'm going to open this up to the guests and then we'll do our entertainment news. Uh, you guys are both actors. Why don't you tell me, uh, looking at this show, where it's going, some of the plot lines or whatnot, if you guys could put yourself into the show with a character, what kind of character would you guys like to be? Jason. Because this show goes everywhere, so... Jason would be one of the models. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know what? Actually, yeah, that would be really funny. That would be fun to play. You know, kind of like, you know, when you're at the top of the game and you actually have an opportunity to help somebody make make themselves and, and do what they're doing. I mean, that was that was something that, that I, I enjoyed taking part in, you know, um... That that would actually be pretty fun. That's what you would want to play. Uh, yeah, because guys at that level, you know, they have no idea. They have no concept of you know what's really going on out there in, in the world of fashion. You know, when when you're getting along out there in in Milan and you know 
I mean, when I was working, Gianni was still alive and, and that whole thing. And, and it, it, it is so far away from where they are now, selling 500 bucks. They have a long way to I go. Mean, oh, yeah. my God. And you think you think the party's in New York and life is in New York. Wait till you hit that circuit and do the Milan, Paris, Hong Kong, <laughs> thing, or London. What yeah, did you, you do th- there? Oh, no, right. what didn't I do? <laughs> <laughs> I can remember. This is a true story. Um, actually, you all were talking about making fun of my jeans, but yeah, these jeans are part of the story. I was doing a show for Romeo Gigli, right? And Romeo Gigli, he's famous for doing these crazy shows. And he, he and this this particular one, he got a, a Pirelli tire factory that had, had had just been disassembled. So you imagine this enormous factory that's just empty, right? He puts out 5,000 chairs, invites the entire fashion industry, who everyone always shows up for Romeo Gigli. He, so, you know, you got 5,000 people in these seats. And so what were created were these roads, like you would just walk down was like walking down a street and so there was like 500 models in this show and you're talking about from the top models in the world all the way down to number 500 right and i'm walking and i'm like i know who's this dude like this guy's next to me i'm like i know tupac <laughs> and I look, and two bucks right walking right next to me. Yeah, what? right. I mean, like stuff like wow. that, where you're like, wow. Those are those moments. Yeah. Those are those moments yeah. where that. you know, yeah. and, and yeah. was, that you know, because he was there to do. He did. Then, then we, you know, then we went and did the Versace show, and he was doing the music live right. for the Versace show. But while he was there. He likes so Romeo, you, so he's just yeah. gonna walk in Romeo show because he's there. Just because so, he feels like it. So basically, it. Wow. this show just has a lot. They could they could go to those zones. Oh that would my be, god! So that's gonna be oh season five Ian and six, hopefully. I just hope I just hope they don't do it like the bougie corporate way and do yeah. like Project I'm Runway or some shit. Like do the right. real right. thing. Like yeah. get out there. I can't wait till they get to Say no to the coke. You know, I want to see you do that first. You know, I want to see the trials and tribulations. We need this show to be one hundred percent authentic. Did you have a quick character? I that mean, you'd like I, to dive I, into? You know, I'm about the journey. This show totally like in, like captures everything about what I'm doing, what I'm trying to do. Like in this day and age, you have to, if you want to make it, you got to create your own content, create exactly. your own way. And I, that's what I'm doing. I mean, I'm partnering with people, creating our own stuff, getting our stuff out there. So any character really, I mean, I love Rachel's struggle. Oh, I gosh. think that her She's journey so just funny. of trying to figure it out, like I would love to you should be, be a in co-worker, that position. Yeah. yeah, a co-worker <laughs> or Ben. I mean, I would love... I don't know. He's cool. You could be like, like her. You could too. be like Rachel's friend, and then in that biscuit little you know job, right. you end up burning her ass. <laughs> I would. I would okay. Be, I would be Cam. Cam. That is what I'm predicting for, for yeah. you. Let's go. Uh, How to make it in America? A lot of stuff going on. Let's do mm-hmm. some Speaking entertainment Cam, news, Mr. I Jesse Janity. Okay. Well, I thought that was. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. 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 No, no, it's you. Okay. It's you. It's you. You're first. <laughs> Oh, my music. That's your music. Go ahead <laughs> okay, and make so it like up. So like I was saying, speaking of Cam. Um, so Victor has Razuk. said, yes, Razuk, has said that um, what you guys don't know is that majority of the places that has been shot for the scenes is his neighborhood. Yeah. And so he relates to every single scene because it's the places that he grew up. He ate at the deli. Every time he's eating a sandwich, he's reminding the cast and crew mm-hmm. of his childhood memories. Um, he even pointed out a place where he had his first kiss. That's in one of the scenes. Yeah. So yeah, he's constantly being able to, you know, and be I'm in sure, his hometown. And I'm sure on his press tour, they're asking that every single time. So if we ever got the opportunity to interview Victor Rizuk, we're going to ask everything but that because I'm sure that is what <laughs> he's going to say. How, how authentic is it to you oh, because you grew up in the L.A.S. Exactly. Yeah. 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 We're, we're going right to go hold direction we'll like ask like oh well, you know uh, what would a date with spicy mari be like we'll, we'll, we'll switch it up i don't know just thinking ideas okay what do we have next so last um last episode on after buzz we had mentioned and compared the uh what, oh, uh, entourage, entourage versus, right, yeah. exactly. Because everyone's talking about versus it. Versus how to make it in America, because yeah. it's very, you know, similar, the the paths. Mm-hmm. And so what Brian Greenberg was saying was that he calls his particular show the entrepreneurs of entourage. Okay. And so I think that's pretty dope because he wants to differentiate his show yeah. from, you know, from entourage. And I think as the actor. Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. I mean, come on. And I think as the actors, they got to embrace it because it's just going to keep happening. Yeah. I, th- I always hated when musicians, uh, you know, oh, I'm not like the blank meets blank, you know, because you're so artistic. And I get it. But you almost if you're trying to sell yourself initially and no one gets to know who you are, you got to say where the entourage meets blah, blah, right, blah, right, blah. Right. Right. And, and I know there's a lot of artists that are kind of above that. But I don't know if I was a musician, I would say I'm like the blank meets blank. Entourage just so people for entrepreneurs. Could, because I want you to be a fan and come, you know, follow my work. So I appreciate that all these actors have been saying that it's the entourage of the entrepreneurs. Yeah. 
And then uh, Ellie Gessner, if okay. you guys are not familiar with him, he is the creator yeah. for Zoo York, which yes. is uh, apparel that we see all the time for years, in, yeah. in, in, in everyday living, mm-hmm. but also on the show now. You guys may not catch it, but you're going to start to pay attention now yeah. that you see Zoo York shirts pop up. Well, he is the uh, you know fashionista. He's or, like their contact yeah, for he, the show he's to a make consultant, Chris. Their fashion consultant for the show. Yeah. And so he gets a little you know endorsement on the show as well. And that's good because Chris had to be such an authentic line for this show, or at least you know people had to like it so i'd like to see a little bit more of it i'm sorry a hoodie with some 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 i haven't seen but they are but in fairness but they are about no that. but they I are starting off though so let's I, get let's give them a little I time to work with a little with. bit more yeah. like, i think they're gonna do that in yeah. yeah if they're brand girls if they get on you know i think we're gonna see more well if anything i think the big takeaway from this is that uh the show how to make an america is at least you know deciding you know i, I don't know how credible we'll call zoo york but like it's saying that we're going to not just make this a wash. Like, we're going to actually take a moment to make sure we have the best person. You know, Broke Mogul, you know, Scott Venner right. does music. We're going to make sure we have the best person for clothing. But I feel like if Cam and um, Ben are really going to own this whole we want to be fashion designers thing, yeah. you guys should read some magazines because you guys wear, like, Good, t-shirts yeah. and jeans every episode. Okay, I'm with so that. So yeah. I don't know if I met them if I would really believe that they're into fashion like that. Urban fashion or young fashion, I don't know. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot. So the, the, we'll we'll see. Well, you know, we'll see the stepping it up a little bit. And I'm dying to see the you know the little yacht party. I feel like they're mm-hmm. starting to at least want to dress better and make a better impression. You know, uh, just why in New I York mean, City it's not Paris, but you know it's something. It's a start. You know, right? And Brian admitted that Brian Greenberg admitted that in real life he had no clue about fashion. That he yeah. had to do his That's research. <laughs> 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 had to the the do guy from research. St. Louis didn't know. Yeah, <laughs> maybe you well. can give him some tips. Um, we know you know your fashion. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool. So Zoo York is uh, help, helping right, out. Right, exactly. Okay, and then a lot's going on on the Facebook fan page, right? Uh, oh, it, yeah, they have a, a fashion competition going on yeah. for T-shirts. Yes. And so you can look you can at the shirts enter. now. Yeah, if anybody's a fashion designer, you guys should definitely yeah. check out um, How to Make It in America all, all on Facebook. All the shirts are already up right now, so you can look at them and you can vote. And it's just a fun little contest. Viral, you know, How to Make in America yeah, stays very viral. Yeah, tons of people this competition. I send it to some friends as yeah. well that are fashion designers. And you can always see the uh, videos, too. Full episodes are right there. Nice. And they do a lot of, like, little interviews. There was a really cool one, LA Confidential, on uh, Ian Edelman, who is our spotlight, we'll do in a second, and uh, Brian Greenberg. They also had a Scott Venner, the music guy. Uh, they also had his interview, too. So that's where you get connected to the How to Make it in America world if you're a fan of the show. How so long connected. until we see the reality show of American Apparel? I mean, because, I mean, yeah. it's just like, well, yeah, I've I said mean, reality right. show. I don't know. I don't no, know. like it's spicy, all the lawsuits. And <laughs> yeah. And yeah. The Advertisement. Yeah. 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 There's an idea That'd to be, be had. We'll, 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 we'll have to produce it. I would watch it. it. Um, okay, that wraps up the entertainment news. Let's talk about, real quick, your uh, How to Make It in America cast and crew profile. We're taking a look here so at Ian Edelman. Ian Edelman is on our spotlight tonight, and he is the producer for How to Make It in America. He also was a producer for Entourage. And a lot of people are speculating, like, oh, is this based on your true life? And it actually... Well, he looks like Ben, kind of. <laughs> he does kind of look like Ben. Um, it is a lot about his personal experience in New York growing up. And he never himself tried to become a fashion designer, although one of the other executive producers on the show right. did and can relate to that. He was more focused on, like, the skate world. He played basketball growing up. Right. And so a lot of the characters are based on just, you know, his childhood. But he got his inspiration from the show based on experiences that he read about for up and coming people in the fashion industry, such okay. as Ralph Lauren. Ralph Lauren, yeah, he, he has heard said about that in a how they, can, you know, made it in America. And Ralph Lauren is somebody who created a lifestyle brand, right. and so off he's, of selling ties. Right. He and he saw that he saw how people grinded out and made it in America, and now they're these cabajillionaires. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a great article uh, actually uh, this month, LA Confidential with uh, Edelman and Greenberg. They're, they're talking to you know they interview each other actually. In LA Confidential uh, magazine. I love those interviews yeah. where it's the two yeah. entertainers. Yeah. I mean, I, I read that one where I, they interviewed each other. I, I'd sometimes prefer a television host like Madi to be doing <laughs> the interview, but sometimes it is cool to hear them yeah, go we, back we and like forth. To watch you know, them, yeah. yeah. But any other time, we're like hiring to. you. You know, <laughs> 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 you might not show up for your Appreciate friend, but you that. show up for Madi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm I'm not no, no. And when she books it, she's gonna book it as a date. It's a date. Yeah. Thank you, Jason, for showing up. Um, and you have a couple they more things on Ian, about right? About Ian, yeah. I mean, just the... the or does um, that wrap it up? No, just... <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about no, Ian for a while. No, Ian, Ian New York is, City guy. Right, definitely New York City guy. But um, one interesting story is that he actually found Wilfredo's character. Oh. Um, and this was a tidbit that was given to me by uh, Javi himself. Oh, that um, he okay. was found by him in the skateboarding shop that he worked in. Yeah. And so 
he got the opportunity to audition and he did. Meaning he wasn't his, a diehard actor. He, well, he was in kids. Yeah. And then he got an opportunity to pursue acting again when approached by the yeah. producers from How to Make It in America that came into that sketch shop. Right. And so they were like, get your butt to New York for an audition. And he did. And yeah. he, he booked it. The only thing interesting about kids. that is that was yeah. just, that. Now yeah. that was a movie. That was. We'll have to do an after show wow. about the movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, wow. All yeah. these years later, Rosario survived. Dawson in that too. Rosa, anyway. I know um, how far she's come. She was, she's been pushing. Yeah. She definitely I like has. her. She does a lot of philanthropy. Yeah. Philanthropy. Yeah. Well, Talented and beautiful. Yeah. 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 I know yeah. what you're saying. Um, <laughs> cool. Uh, let's talk about, okay, that wraps up your report. Thank you. Well, one more thing. You guys had mentioned earlier about is Ian going to, you know. Oh, the differences. Well, is he going to make the storyline? You know, how, how soon are we going to see their success? And he has already said that he's not giving it to them easy, and that they have to earn uh, their spotlight when they eventually get right. to Paris. He also said uh, oh, he was he, also he talking about the, the the minor difference with uh, How to Make It in America and uh, Entourage is that the female character Lake Bell. I don't know if she's really that much of an so, influence, but he did make the mention of that too. I mean, that's a um, amazing comparison to Entourage because a lot of the characters that we see, there's more of a female uh, prevalent influence in this TV show as opposed to Entourage. You just had, you know, random characters come in. Well, there was in female influences in Entourage, yeah. but they may not they have been. They were just sleeping with the guys. Anything. There was no real characters on the show. <laughs> there was a lot of female that, influences, that, just saying. Right. But nobody got their time that the bunch. story was based around Midget them. Midgets and twins. And Lake yeah. Bell is really getting a lot of. Of a, a lot of time for yeah, character the, she development. Got booth story time a couple yet. weeks ago. Oh yeah, uh, cool. Oh, yeah, that, that, uh, yeah that, I like this picture here because that basically I like shows. Going to Paris, that'd be yeah. Fun. yeah, that's but your. But that's you said they have to earn like that. Andre you're not going to see. You're not going to see it anytime we'll soon. We'll talk about that in predictions real quick. That wraps up the entertainment yes. report. Uh, Jesse, are you ready? Because Jesse yes, sir. Uh, does a lot of the social media stuff, so he wanted to track down some cool, some cool. Hey, don't not tapping away. Yeah, I'm hacking away. Yeah, he's already got your Twitter. Account. He wrote crazy things about you. I'm following you, man. I'm already uh, following you. <laughs> real quick with the Twitter, some Twitter news. No, well, let's start off uh, with the big uh, head honcho himself, Ian Edelman. Yes, uh, you what know, did he, he tweet? made the show on uh, Dreams and Ambitions. We hear the terms get rich quick in the get show a lot. Get rich quick is always on this show. They find a way to, you know, term that in the show. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And so he uh, took a tweet in a comedic light and said, if anyone wants to get rich quick in New York City, they will open up a Wahoo's Fish Taco on the island of Manhattan ASAP. Word. That's so Word. clever, right? Any Mexican <laughs> restaurant in New York. Just Why? saying. I still can't understand why you can't get good Mexican food. Mexican food. Mexican food. Mexican food. Is it Washington Heights you could like though? No, not even there, right? Is there the any worst city? I've ever had. I went to Cinco There's de... no good it's, Mexican food. Once yeah, I was in New York on Cinco de Mayo, and I was just like expecting a different scene, but, but it wasn't but really But Mexicans that won't scene. move there because they're Mexican food. Yeah. Right. So yeah. <laughs> they won't even go open a shop But if you there. want Puerto Rican food, you'll be good. If you want Mofongo, go to New York. After tonight's episode, everyone wants a little Mexican Mofongo. Well, here's a little Mofongo tweet that we saw in the light of uh, Lake Bell last week. We yes. saw her tweeting about the support for her boobs. Oh, literally. that was a funny tweet. I like that. And, yeah. um, so anyways, we see uh, Sarah Riff, who's then worked with Jimmy Choo and made a guest appearance on the show recently. Uh, she, was, she, was, she was the girl last week who was the drunk girl who, uh, when they were walking into the wedding, she said, oh, you know, you, oh, how long? Oh, yeah. you guys She had a quick little little role there. Yeah. Um, she has, you know, a career in her own right. She just happens to be with Ian Edelman. What right. was the tweet, though? <laughs> oh. She said, you know I got a head for business and a body for sin. Can you blame me? Hashtag how to make it. Hashtag sleeping with the boss. I love that. Oh. I love it. But she's, she's not dogging herself. She's having fun. Whoa. Earlier, before you heard Lake Bell talking about, oh, thanks for having support of my boobs, right. you know. I like it. This show's funny. And, and I like you know, that she's playing with that. She, she can get yeah, embarrassed. She's making fun of herself. Yeah. Yeah. She's not taking she's not herself taking too seriously. Yeah. Yeah. And neither does her character take yeah. herself yeah. seriously. Huh? <laughs> she's like, nah, sleep with the boss. Oh, maybe she's <laughs> serious. Maybe, yeah. She's really pushing maybe that. Like, maybe. Yeah. She, she, yeah, she's like, yeah. if you want to make it in America, you get down with one of the producers. You know what I'm saying? No. But it's good to see um, everything from the show come off uh, offline and mm-hmm. go on to Twitter and social yeah. media stuff. So we see the streetwear uh, retailer Karma Loop TV. Yes, Karma Loop is uh, doing their thing. Stepped up their game and put up some uh, How to Make It America content. Oh, I they like have this. A, they have an interview with Ben Cam, Domingo, and Capo, the real characters, talking about Chris. So do you see what I'm saying? Karma Loop doesn't just, they're not just doing interviews with Brian Greenberg, Victor Rizzo, you know, uh, Domingo. Well, Domingo is the character. Uh, you know, Kid Cudi. Uh, they actually, on their website right now, if you guys go to the site, you could see real interviews with them right. as the characters. Characters, which is kind of cool to see. Makes the brand even bigger. Yeah, you know? definitely. I, I thought I was watching some weird thing. I was like, I'm expecting Brian Greenberg's answer. But no, he's like, yeah, me and Cam, we met. And it just seemed cool. a little... Yeah, that is. A I, like little, that. I like that, That's too. Cool. You know, I've never seen that done. Yeah. That's a great and, idea. And Karma Loop, you know, they definitely uh, have a big shine out there. 
two, and they got uh, well, they were in uh, episode one in uh, for season two on the premiere. So they got worked into one of the shows too. Just real yeah, quick little cool. notice on the pop up shop. I yeah. the, at the pop up shop. Exactly. That was cool. And uh, last week I was talking about who I am at Louise Guzman was tweeting oh, to. Louis and, Guzman. Uh, so I started digging a little bit more, and I thought, although the Twitter feed of uh, Louis Guzman is awesome, the YouTube channel of his is incredibly awesome. He has some new content. A day in the life of Louis Guzman. Louis Guzman on the six train. Louis Guzman Twitter responses, and of course the Louis Guzman response for Duck Sauce video. Oh, Hi. you guys know about this Duck yeah, Sauce video? Yeah, the Duck Sauce video, video is no. hilarious. That, Jason, is it's the uh, it's the uh, Bra- uh, Barbara Streisand is is the bullet mm-hmm. points yes, of the yes. song. This, it's, a, it's, it's a dancey. They took that beat and yeah. they just put Louis Guzman. But listen, let's do some stats. And I'm wondering if Louis Guzman got involved in the social media world because of this. Because the stats on the How to Make It in America HBO released Louis Guzman, like Duck Sauce kind of mm-hmm. remake mm-hmm. or whatever. 1.3 million views already. Wow. Wow. So listen, when we wow. music just saying, wow. hashtag, just saying. talking about a guy who's done it in the last. And, and, and the song is called. I mean, he is How to Make It in America. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's anybody. Anybody. I was that's trying to remember, what was it? His name is Joe, or what was the other HBO show he was on? He's been the, on a lot of stuff. And, and you know what I like? You know what HBO? You know what I pre- appreciate on his YouTube page? We are seeing Renee, and Renee's kind of like a bad guy, or he's becoming soft, or whatever. Louis Guzman's like a funny, funny guy. So mm-hmm. when you see those YouTube videos, um, you get to see that again. So I think that's pretty yeah, cool. And it's again, a nice transformation. How dope is that for HBO to have a whole song? They could have made it the mm-hmm. Victor Razuk song, right? But the Brian Greenberg song, you know. Oh. But they made it Louis, Louis Guzman, Guzman. Louis and it was Guzman. fun, you know. <laughs> the Duck Sauce uh, song does well. So there you go. Um, cool, let's do some predictions and I think we're almost ready to wrap up. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. Okay, so what do we think is going to be the first thing we see after the uh, taxi cab Mongfongo incident? Is what's going to. I think Ben's going to give great. Nancy an STD. <laughs> whoa, whoa. She, she's taking the show to the next level. Wow, wow. you went away. No, no, this is not a reality show I like know. on VH1. Oh man, um, just playing. Will it compromise the business yeah. relationship? Uh, they're all nasty, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did they? Did he? Did he put use protection in the taxi? I didn't see it. In the or taxi, in the bed. Yeah. <laughs> they took it to her. Can we talk aesthetically <laughs> or, or the, the vibe? That Spanish scene was just it was too much. Raw. The, <laughs> the scene think, was raw. I think their relationship or their newfound thing fling is going to create some really interesting dynamics to their whole hustle yeah. because she controls so much and mm-hmm. she's kind of like a boss so you're like Don't sleeping with the boss business now with pleasure mixing business oh, with well, pleasure can Sarah Riff said it works so, <laughs> so maybe, she, maybe this is another thing she can dangle, dangle. I mean a lot of oh. people sleep their way to the top yeah I yeah. mean hey point Why me in the right direction I just can't <laughs> find the right direction <laughs> <laughs> the spicy way to life well you know oh, well. Marty you were talking a couple weeks ago a about role reversal you yeah. you were talking about how um, Ben and Cam will sort of be split in a way not yeah. because of them but because Nancy is saying I want to work with Ben well there was a nice insertion to figure that one out well we'll talk about After Buzz (laughs) Mari predicted this a few uh, After Buzzes ago definitely we didn't agree with her but she predicted it Uh, I'm watching you yeah gives me a reason (laughs) I should be writing on my free time yeah right (laughs) gives me a reason to go to your spicy Mari Twitter there you go Mr. Fashion and you've done the fashion world what do you think quick predictions as we wrap up they go to Paris they hit it big Carl Lagerfeld in the All audience right. takes it. There it is. <laughs> Moving on. All right, cool. Thanks. How to make it America? That wraps up our after show. Ronnie right. Jr., Spicy Mari. We got Jesse. We've got the JC hung out, and we'll do this all over again. Our guests, real quick, Mari. Um, Azure B and Jason, and you can check Jason in Tyler Perry's uh, dramedy series for Better or Worse. November 25th. Check it out yes. on TBS. Tyler Perry's new show for Better and or Worse. And in the game, and uh, his comedy in uh, Apartment 23 on ABC. We're going to do an after show on every one of your shows and just talk about you. Oh, yeah. He's had to make it in the Now that I've seen what you guys do, I don't ever want to do it. It's been fantastic. Thank you guys for coming out of Make It America. We uh, did it. We'll do it again next week. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye. From producers Kevin Undergaro and Phil Svitek, engineer DJ Jesse Janity, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. If you have questions or comments, be sure to buzz us at info at AfterBuzzTV.com. And you can find us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter by searching for AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you Afterbuzz. Afterbuzz. Afterbuzz.
expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.